and simply use a knife to peel back um, this um, inedible skin or top, whatever the layer, the top layer of the tongue is called. Um, so it's going to go in the water, which isn't boiling yet, but will be, and with enough water to cover it. This is really very simpler than it seems. Um, I know that, um, especially if you haven't had tongue or are grossed out by the thought of it, uh, this is an excellent cut of meat that Americans simply aren't used to. You can find tongue at uh, ethnic uh, grocery stores or supermarkets. Um, as I said, you know, other countries, we basically ship tongue to other countries like France and Japan where it's considered a delicacy. Uh, this is easy to prepare. It does take a little bit of time, though, in total. Uh, but I think it's well worth the effort. So right now we'll simply uh, I'll add a little bit more water to the pot, just a little, and let this boil. Once it hits the boil, I'll let it boil for one hour. While the veal tongue is uh, boiling, you'll notice that there's like this scum around the edge. That's simply proteins. It's not blood. It's simply proteins that are coming off of the uh, meat. You can simply take a spoon or a, sp or a ladle and you clear those away. That's nothing to worry about. But as you can see, this thing is boiling away and will be let to do so actually under slightly lower heat, um, but continuously for about an hour. The tongue has been boiling for about half an hour now. As you can see, I've put a lid, a lid on top of the uh, pot, and it is boiling at a fair rate. Let's take a quick look at it. Okay, and there you can see the tongue is boiling in there. Um, it's not at a, it's sort of at a medium high-ish uh, boil. Um, I've had to replace some of the water, of course. Uh, but as you can see, this thing is boiling away. You can also see that this outer I hope you can see this outer part of it is very white. That's the part of the tongue, the uh, skin of the tongue, that's going to have to be removed. So it's been about half an hour now, uh, and I did turn it once over. I'll probably turn it again in about 10 minutes. Um, but at in another half an hour, this thing will be taken out of the pot, put on a plate, and this the skin, um, the exterior skin of the tongue is going to be removed and then put back in to the pot um, along with some potatoes olive oil, salt, pepper, oregano, uh, and then let to, and let to um, boil at a very low heat until the remaining water reduces. So that's the goal. So we've got another, about another half an hour left. I uh, just wanted you to take a look at it, see how it was looking. Um, again, on occasion you're going to have to replace some, add more water in. Uh, that's not a big deal. So anyway. Okay, we've reached the hour mark. As you can see, the uh, veal tongue continues to cook at a high-medium heat, uh, constant boil. Um, I turned it over at about the 40-minute mark. So I turned it over once at the 20-minute mark, turned it over again at the 40-minute mark. Now I'm going to take the tongue out and remove the outer skin layer, which is not edible. Uh, it should come out pretty easily. Um, be patient. Make sure you do it right. Um, and I guess that's the next step. This is a bit of a hassle. Uh, as you can see here, um, the outer layer of the tongue, I'm starting to peel it back. Uh, it does not want to come off. Uh, you have to take your time a bit and uh, be a little bit patient. But as you can see, uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's a skin. It's, it's the outer layer of the uh, tongue. Uh, but it has to come off. It is not edible. So uh, this will take a little bit of time. Um, and I'll be back when I finish peeling it off. Okay, the outer skin's been peeled away from the tongue. As you can see, there's a different color here. Uh, it takes some effort to get that outer layer of skin out. Um, actually, here's the results, as you can see. Um, I mean, it's the, it's the outer layer of the tongue. It's um, almost like a leather. And uh, there's some pieces came out in large, uh, large chunks. Other pieces had to be scraped off. Nevertheless, that outer, outer layer must come off. It is not edible. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the tongue back in into the pot, uh, add more water to cover, and then when we get down to the point where um, you have about a couple of inches of water, I'm going to throw in some potatoes that have been quartered, about a quarter cup of olive oil, salt, pepper, and oregano, and then put it on a very low heat so that the remaining uh, water reduces. 
when that happens, you're done. I mean, it's literally that simple. The problem is, is that, of course, um, this is going to take about a couple of hours total. Uh, you know, you can fry a pork chop, or I can fry a pork chop in a cast iron skillet in six minutes. Uh, you can make a mushroom omelet, uh, or most of the work requires the sautéing of the mushrooms. You can make a mushroom omelet in about six minutes. Cooking food in order to get you by a meal uh, doesn't take that much time or effort. It can be done very, very quickly. Real cooking uh, takes a lot of effort. Uh, the problem, of course, here is that with uh, something like a veal tongue, this is something that most Americans will not even think about uh, trying. Yet, as you can see, all that really takes is boiling this thing and taking time to prepare it correctly. Um, I mean, that's literally all that's going to happen. I mean, this front part of the tongue has a different texture than the back part of the tongue. Uh, the back part of the tongue is more of a beef-like texture than the front part. The front part is actually very little, very little taste. Very, it's very uniform. Uh, but you know, this is uh, something that I recommend you try. I mean, I like it a lot. Um, and again, other other parts of the world, this is considered um, a delicacy. So uh, we'll let this. I'll cover this up with water. Again, let it reduce down. It's at a high medium heat. Uh, so it's about two inches of water left. And then I'll throw in some potatoes, quarter cup of olive oil, salt, pepper, oregano, and then put it on a very low heat to simmer so that the remaining water reduces. And when, when it happens, you are literally done. Uh, so stay tuned. Another out. Another hour has passed. Let's take a look. Okay, yeah, it's, and I've turned it a couple times since I put it back in. Um, I'm thinking. So yeah, it might be time to put in the uh, quarter potatoes, quarter cup of olive oil, salt, pepper, oregano, and let this thing simmer for a bit. Yeah, this meat's pretty much done. Um, and that's pretty much, I think, what I'm going to do right now. Um, I think it's at the point where, but it's been, it's been two hours since I started. So again, this is... This is real cooking in a sense, even though what I'm doing is very simple. Uh, real cooking takes a lot of time and monitoring of food and this and that. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm at the point now where uh, it's probably got just enough water that I'm going to put in the quartered potatoes. And then let this thing simmer, uh, oil, etc and then let it simmer uh, until the remaining water reduces and then we're done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow that and um, after that happens what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the meat out of the um, I'm going to take everything out of the pot, put it on a plate and then let the meat cool to room temperature. Uh, it'll be easier to cut through and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut through here and cut through here, which I really shouldn't do until I'm ready to actually eat that part of the tongue. But I want to, as a last, show you that the, um, the dish is done and um, show you the different texture of the back of the tongue versus the front. Again, this is um, the back of the tongue is more beefy. Uh, you'll see um, you know, the arteries and veins, you'll see a lot of fat. The front of the tongue is very smooth and you don't see any kind of structure uh, on the meat. Uh, but nevertheless, it's been two hours since I started. And we're probably looking at perhaps even another hour max as uh, I wait for the water to reduce under this lower heat. Um, but that's pretty much it. I will touch base again uh, when this is done. And we're done. Um, after I put the veal tongue back in the pot to boil, I probably could have taken it out um, about halfway through. So total cooking time I think would have been about two and a half hours. I, I took it out about 40 minutes uh, out. So um, so basically this is it. Um, I also took the potatoes out. Uh, I didn't really give it a chance to fully reduce because I noticed that the potatoes were getting really soft. Not only that, when I put a fork in the veal tongue uh, I could detect that it had been cooked. So I didn't want to overcook the meat. And besides, once you pull meat out, out of off your frying pan or out of the pot, uh, it still has a lot of residual heat, so it's still technically cooking. Uh, nevertheless, it's done. And um, next, I'm going to cut in both the front and the rear back part of the tongue to show you the textural difference. Okay, as you can see, 
Um, this piece was cut uh, from the far, uh, front part of the tongue. This piece was cut from the back. And as you can see, there's a real difference in the texture. Um, this, you really can't tell um, what it is. I mean, it's just that's just the way that it works. But here you can actually see um, more definition on the muscle, the fat, etc., um, veins and whatnot. Um, this is all gonna, it's all good. I mean, it's cooked properly. Um, I mean, it, it's, it was easy to uh, prepare. Um, and again, I mean, if you think about it, this is like um, when you get uh, corned beef brisket and you cook it at home, what you basically do is you simmer it in the pot for about three hours to make it soft and to cook it. That's basically what you do. That's basically what we've done here. Um, Americans typically don't eat organ meats. Something like veal tongue is not going to be uh, in the minds of your average American, but it is an excellent uh, tasty meat. Um, this can be used like for lunch at work. Um, it'll freeze well um, and it'll last, it should be at least three or four meals. Um, so anyway, so I just uh, wanted to put this together and uh, show everybody how easy it is to cook veal tongue. And there you have it.